so I'd like next to introduce Antonio. Antonio is coming to us from Zebec. And while Antonio is putting his presentation up on the stage, um, he's going to be presenting Cash Cow, How Small Farms Can Profit from Biogas. And one of uh, Antonio's fun facts, I know he has many, but uh, as a soccer fan, one of Antonio's dreams was to play in a soccer game in Brazil. And on a business trip to that country, uh, he was able to achieve his dream by playing as a representative of a Canadian company with a local distributor soccer team. So Antonio, we'll ask you to share your screen so you can put up your presentation if you might. And uh, we're very uh, much interested in seeing your comments in terms of how we can make small farms profit from biogas. Uh, I know that this is a particular uh, very interesting question for many. And um, so I think it's going to have some, some keen ears on our, uh, on our listening screen. So Antonio, we can see your presentation. You Excellent. just hit that hide button and we can hear your audio and you're good to go. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jennifer. And thank you to the Canadian Biogas Association and the Valley of Biogas uh, organizers. I, it's it's uh, really a pleasure to be here and uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, one of the, uh, the things that I have been seeing for many years, I will say more than 20 years, is the biogas transformation industry worldwide. And I have the opportunity to see, you know, to collect biogas to be brown of them, and then uh, biogas to be part of a fuel to produce uh, heat and power, and most recently, obviously, the interest to uh, produce renewable natural gas. So this is something that uh, for me has been very amazed to see and, um, you know, contribute with this, this kind of uh, uh, transformation. In, Let's say in, in the renewable natural gas, uh, uh, there is a, a lot of improvements. There is a different kind of technologies, different kind of uh, process um, to be used. But one of the things that we have been facing for the last uh, few years is how we can uh, help the end users by the learning process in provide a technology or solution that could be used not just for medium, uh, high capacity, but also for a small capacity. So, so today is basically uh, part of my presentation is to let you know what uh, CIVE has been doing uh, for the last uh, years to offer this kind of uh, a small solution. So talking about CIVE, just quickly, um, we have been in the industry for more than uh, 50 years. Um, we have a different line of products. Um, we started with uh, uh, gas filters. We have also air dryers and natural gas dryers, and um, obviously also uh, technology that we use to purify different industrial gases as well as biogas. And by having this background, this experience, we have been, um, you know, uh, taking this uh, opportunity to um, research and develop uh, different aspects to not just uh, provide uh, an equipment to make this uh, uh, biogas purification system, but it's also how we can put different other elements to provide this, this kind of a solution. So this is, this is uh, um, uh, uh, something that I really wanted to, to tell you because uh, we have been part of a many kind of pilot programs just to reach different um, specifications, not just in North America and Canada, but also in the uh, United States, Asia, Europe, Latin America, which put us in a very good position to understand many aspects of this industry. And I was really lucky to be part of this. Um, I have been involved in different kind of projects uh, for different applications, um, uh, anaerobic digestion for to, to purify biogas from animal waste, agricultural waste, and hydraulic digester from wastewater treatment plants, and also projects in the landfill um, application. So I, I basically just trying to capture this uh, kind of uh, um, information from different sites, different 
uh, customers and then bring to the company just to you know create a solution that uh, could be very uh, productive for the end user at the end of the day. So why is it important to implement biogas upgrading system? As I mentioned, I mean, for this different stage, uh, to go into the way that we uh, can help uh, end users to produce re renewable natural gas, we can see different studies, you know, in different um, uh, associations, uh, institutions. But in my opinion, something that is important to keep in mind is the fact that by producing renewable natural gas, it's not just to have an alternative fuel, but it's also how we can protect the environment. And by doing that, I think uh, that is uh, uh, something that combines uh, two different aspects that can help the end user. And uh, as an example, just to um, was reading some of the articles uh, just a few days ago, in United States, just to give an idea, if we have, you know, the potential to produce, let's say, uh, 4,000 or more than 4,000 4, trillion uh, BTU as a, uh, energy, um, um, by 2040, that will create a lot of opportunities to replace, uh, uh, you know, conventional diesel to renewable natural gas. In the transportation sector, that means that, um, as another example, in Canada, in Quebec, we can create basically 66% of the volume that they, they can distribute in the pipeline and basically just um, uh, prevent 7.2 million tons of uh, emissions by the greenhouses. So this is, this is the kind of uh, examples that we can see the benefit to, um, you know, take biogas and clean it up and produce renewable natural gas. This is, this is um, uh, important because in Canada, particularly, we have more than uh, 10,000 dairy farms. Um, the, one of the challenges I would say is that if um, the industry has a different kind of uh, technologies for medium high capacity, there is um, a question in what to do in terms of the small system that I, they can, you know, uh, use in order to uh, uh, get into this industry and provide some economic solution for the environmental regulations of, you know, um, be a kind of a, a attractive in terms of invest in this kind of uh, uh, projects. And, and the good thing is that uh, currently, there is some um, benefits from uh, the government. There is some benefits from um, certain states or provinces where, you know, the end user can take advantage to, um, you know, um, produce renewable natural gas and sell in the price that is attractive for them and see, um, you know, a quick return of investment. So what has to be considered in this kind of projects? Um, as some of my colleagues already mentioned this morning, um, you know, the, the biogas production in the digester uh, system. Uh, the, the amount of uh, waste that has to be put in these um, systems, either uh, digesters or landfill, is important to secure, you know, the threshold and waste. So that way it will be able to continuously produce biogas. Obviously, the, um, the type of the system to be selected as I mentioned, there is many kind of uh, uh, technologies, but um, we believe that all technologies have been improving in the way that we can support this market um, and provide solution to the end user. The, the renewable natural gas requirements is something that is important to keep in mind. And I have been seeing a lot of uh, uh, problems or issues in, um, you know, having a a good solution because the the fact that um, in some cases uh, the technology was unable to reach those requirements um, didn't help you know to to this kind of a return of investment sooner so this is something that also we have been learning in how to uh, improve those aspects and and uh, guarantee conditions of performance other, other, uh, one of other uh, aspects to be considered is the footprint. I mean, 
how um, you know the system will be installed besides the digester in the farm that could be it's something that is not creating you know uh, the need of big big uh, footprint um, so has to be something also attractive for the end user so basically thinking about that kind of a concept um, CBEC has created a unit that we call BioStream, and the BioStream is basically just a containerized system, um, which is uh, kind of a small and and uh, scalable, and uh, basically have a different different um, feature that we believe it could be help you know these kind of small flow rates, and be able not just to start with something that could be um, uh, you know like a 100 or 200 uh, normal cubits per hour up to um, 450 normal cubits per hour. And probably something important to mention um, uh, that I believe uh, Elena uh, mentioned this before is, you know, the amount of ways to, 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 to um, be able to produce uh, biogas in the way that um, um, we have defined, uh, for example, 35,000 or 40, uh, thousand tons per year to produce let's say 400 420 uh, normal cubits per hour which is basically uh, what we have been seeing in, in different digesters uh, to be able to produce so this system um, comes in to this uh, at this moment to offer using uh, civic technology um, uh, you know to produce renewable natural gas in the way that we can help this um, kind of a small farms, a small flow rates, biogas flow rates that um, could be um, cleaned up and also inject into the pipeline to produce uh, com uh, convention, um, uh, CNA, which, CNA, which is uh, compressed natural gas. The key aspects about this technology is um, what we call the rotary valve PSA. Uh, is, is a technology that has been proved for many years and this technology helps us to um, offer a very compact system the technology um, and i'm gonna talk about that uh, in details later this afternoon during the show, showcase but i think um, it's something that is basically um, you know a very innovative uh, system and way to uh, offer a solution that um, minimizes the space but also um, make the system, um, you know, uh, flexible, uh, compact, and uh, modular, and that's basically something that we have been focused on. And the second aspect is the the uh, material that we use in order to purify gases, and we have been concentrating our attention in how to develop what we call the absorbent media material inside the columns that will be able to remove all those impurities. So, based in more than 15 million hours, um, CBEC has been in, in the industry in um, this process called PSA, or pressure swing absorption. And we have installed uh, many of these units in uh, different countries. That means uh, that, um, you know, getting data from different um, kind of application, we have been uh, able to basically just uh, be, you know, how the uh, level of efficiency in terms of uh, purity and recovery and other aspects like power consumption is very attractive now uh, for our equipment to offer into the market. And one other aspect that I have been um, seeing as a, as a key element is um, how to support uh, our customers locally. I mean, the service support and the technical assistance, I think that's one of the aspect that has been uh, uh, critical for the last years and now um, with this kind of a solution a small system and also with the um, uh, local support i think that's something that the end user is getting you know more comfortable to uh, use a different technologies including obviously our technology as i mentioned this afternoon i'm going to go through the uh, different aspects about this uh, new concept uh, the biostream system that is now available in the market um, here in this picture you can see uh, units that have been in fabrication um, the um,
process of the different kind of equipment inside the container. I will explain that later, but basically has everything needed to receive the gas at lower pressure with different gas composition uh, up to, you know, release the gas at the pressure and purity that is required to be uh, injected into the pipeline or to be uh, converted into um, uh, compressed natural gas. So by doing that, I, I appreciate your time and hopefully we can uh, look later if you have any particular project or comments or questions you, you may want to, to ask. Thank you, Antonio. That's excellent. And uh, I think it is uh, really important to be able to showcase some of the technology and, and your plug to the showcases uh, following this, sec this session is excellent. I encourage everyone in the audience to be able to put your questions in the chat, uh, the stage chat. And Antonio, if you don't mind putting back in your um, audio set so we don't get the feedback. Yeah. The one question that uh, is posed to you here is with respect to interconnection costs. And as you know, the interconnection costs uh, can be significant, um, up to 30% of the install costs. Have you had any success at ZBEC in reducing the soft costs with any government assistance in Canada? So one, one of these uh, features for this uh, system is that you can see containerized system that now requires a less footprint, a less um, mechanical and electrical interconnection. So by doing that, we have a better, um, uh, you know, construction cost, a lower construction cost. And that is something that um, um, we see as a benefit, um, especially if all the additional equipment that normally is installed separate, we put it together in this container that, that reduce significantly this, this uh, installation cost. So that, that is something that um, uh, definitely um, we, we have been working on. It. And in terms of any government assistant pieces that may be of, uh, available out there, you haven't seen anything specifically on that? Well, there is, uh, from, there is two aspects here. One from, from the um, renewable natural gas uh, production in terms of uh, the benefit to, uh, you know, use in the transportation industry or as alternative fuel. There is different kind of regulations that, you know, um, in California, here in BC, the low carbon fuel standard is, is something that has been helping, you know, the end users to encourage and produce renewable natural gas, especially from, from um, agricultural waste, animal waste. And this means that um, the, the protection, the environmental protection is, is a kind of important aspects for these kind of programs. And, you know, reduce the uh, carbon emissions or to help the end user to do, you know, uh, better uh, carbon intensity scores is something that we also have been focused in creating by creating this, this kind of system. So the support from the government, I think, comes more for the environmental protection, but also, um, it, um, you know, the natural gas companies have been helping and encouraged the user to do, um, you know, a better project with better return investment if the off-taker agreement is, is, is uh, you know, follow certain, um, Kind of a government support too. Question Antonio about the containerized system. Does it include pretreatment of hydrogen sulfide and VOCs? Can you speak to that briefly? Yes. So, um, so our colleagues uh, talk about the pretreatment technology this morning and how important it is. Um, there is different aspects in this kind of uh, uh, projects. Is the amount of impurities like uh, H2S, uh, hydrogen sulfide. And if the amount of the hydrogen sulfide is, is, is really high in terms of uh, 3,000 or even higher PPM level, um, there is additional equipment needed to um, treat this, this amount of H2S. The amount of H2S is low. Our system, um, the biostream, is uh, including this kind of a polisher uh, system to remove a certain level of uh, H2S. So that is part of our solution for this particular one. Other impurities, um, ammonia, VOCs, uh, siloxanes, 
it could be treated in a solution that we have including in this um, uh, system by using some kind of a condensation uh, stage, you know, the, the watering system that we can use in order to um, remove water, ammonia, and, and other impurities. So that is part of the uh, solution that we offer now with the biostream system. 